Mistlands is finally here, and magic has been added to the game. Now, if you want to see a full Mistlands overview, I'll put a link in the description to a video that I've made. But today, let's look at everything relating to magic in the new Mistlands update. I'm giving away free copies of Valheim to my subscribers, plus I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and then I'd get one of these, which would really mean the world to me. So please do consider subscribing. There are two different types of magic in the Mistlands update. They are blood magic and elemental magic, and each one of them has a skill level. If we go to our skills and then right to the bottom, you can see the skill level there for each of them. The main difference between blood magic and elemental magic is the fact that blood magic will use a bit of your health each time, simulating using a bit of blood in order to cast the spells. You can tell if an item is going to be a blood magic item before you craft it, as it does let you know in the description, as you can see over here on the right. So it says there you sacrifice a bit of blood or health in order to raise the dead with the dead razor. So therefore you know that is a blood magic, not an elemental magic item. However, you will see here that it does require Ita in order to cast the spell. And if we look through all of these, then each one of the magical items in the game do require Ita in order for you to use them. Ita is a liquid substance from Norse mythology that is the source of all living things. In Valheim, Ita is the magical substance that we will use for all things magic related. I'll show you how to get Ita later on in the video, but for now, let's have a look at how you get started with magic in the Valheim Mistlands update. So the first thing you'll need in order to get started is a sap extractor and if we right click with our hammer and go to crafting this is the sap extractor right here and we can see the things we need for it so i'm going to assume you know how to get black metal but let's talk about how we get the yggdrasil wood and also the diverger extractor so the wood is very easy to get you just have to find these yggdrasil shoots and chop them down and as you can see there we unlocked a lot of recipes and we got ourselves a bit of this new wood so you need 10 of those to build a sap extractor and that's how you get it now the other item that you need the diverger extractor is a little bit more more tricky to get because you need to find yourself these NPC mages and rogues. They have a couple different types of camp in the Mistlands biome and when you find them you will need to kill them. However they are fairly strong so do make sure you're very geared before you attempt this. Now once you've killed them you can go and loot their area and their areas can look different this is just one example of them but anywhere you see those NPC mages and rogues they will have the crates nearby. So you get the normal crates like this but the one we're interested in is this one right here the diverger component crate. So if I go ahead and just smash that one open then you'll see there that's how we get the extractor smashing open the normal chest you can get a wide range of different things and one of those things does include this right here which is soft tissue now this is also going to be useful and i'll come on to why that is later on but do make sure you get all of that stuff while you're here so once you've unlocked the sap extractor recipe you then want to go ahead and find one of these things this is of course the glowing yggdrasil wood so now when we right click and we want to place a sap extractor we can go ahead and place it on top of this wood just like that you can see here here, this ancient root is pulsing with energy and the sap extractor taps into that energy and extracts out some sap over time. Now whilst this is extracting you can make a note of where it is on the map maybe just make a little dot and make a little mark or something like that and then you can go and look for other things because to get fully into magic we're going to need to find dungeons as well. So this right here is what dungeons can look like in game and you do want to be heavily geared in order to explore them. Now these things here are black cores and we get those from the dungeons and this is going to be something that we're going to need. The black cores will unlock the item refinery and the Galda table, all of which are used in the magical process. If you want more information on exploring these dungeons, there's a video link in the description to a full Mistlands overview where I cover this in more detail. When exploring, do mark the location of the dungeons and when you complete them, you can always cross them off, but it's always good to know for later. Also mark off any NPC villages you find with the other divergers and rogues because you will need to kill them later on to get more materials to get further into magic. So this right here is the Ita refinery and once you've got the sap from the sap extractor along with the other items you need of course then you'll be able to make one and this is how it looks in the game i have to say i think it is the new coolest looking valheim crafting station now to get this thing working you need to enter sap in here but you also need to go up to the top of the machine and enter in the soft tissue up here and that's why we need the soft tissue that we get from those npcs so by combining the soft tissue and the sap over time this will then produce the refined item and if you're wondering what this green thing is that keeps shooting off little things this actually is a refined item that has been produced so if you place it down on an item stand, every now and again, it just shoots off a little green pulse, which is kind of fun. Do be careful though, because it actually does damage the things that it hits, including yourself. It can damage you and I think poison you or something like that. So be careful, but they are kind of fun. So if we add in the soft tissue up here, and then we can add in some sap down at the bottom over here, and then the machine starts to work. I have to say the animation of this working looks absolutely fantastic, doesn't it? The moving pieces and the glowing purple bits here, I think it's just really, really nice. And of course, when the process is finished, the refined item will just drop 
drop down out of this little area right here. And there we go. It's sat there waiting for us and we can go and pick it up. Now, again, if you leave too much of it just on the floor here when it's being produced, it will still shoot off the little green bits like the ITA tends to do. So if this is in your base, don't leave like 20 pieces of it on the floor after being processed for too long because you might find that when you come back, some of your base has been destroyed. If you were to get particularly unlucky and it just happens to shoot out at a bottom block that's holding things up, then of course everything above it could also collapse. So definitely be careful with this one. Now, once you get the refined ITA, you'll then be able to make this thing right here. This is the Galda table and is the new magical workbench. So if we hover over this, you'll see what the recipe is for it right there. And along with the black cores, you do of course need the refined ITA and a couple other things. But once you've got it, if we go ahead and open this up, there's a number of things that you can make here, including all of the staffs, the seal breaker, which you need to spawn in the boss, and the feather cape, which is going to be very useful. On top of that, you can also make the dead razor item here. So basically all the magical items and then also the seal breaker and the feather cape are made here. If you want to upgrade things, you'll need the rune table. That is the upgrade for this workbench. And the recipe for that is seen here. So again, you will need more refined ITA for that. It's worth mentioning as well that the refined ITA is used in a number of non-magical recipes. Things like the new Mistwalker sword, the demolisher, the Carpher shields and things like that. So you'll need it for a lot of items in this game. So in order to use magical spells, you need to build up your ITA essence. And you do that by eating foods that have ITA in them. So starting with the Yggdrasil porridge right here, you can see the recipe for this requires sap, barley, and also royal jelly. Royal jelly, essentially, you get from killing these seeker broods, which can be found in the Mistlands dungeons. Now, this will give you some health and stamina like normal food, but there's now a third stat where it will give you ITA, and it gives you 80 ITA for the Yggdrasil porridge. The next thing you can make is the uncooked, magically stuffed mushroom, and obviously this then does need to be cooked before it can be eaten. For this, you'll need mage caps, blood clots, and also turnips. Mage caps can just be found by wandering around the Mistlands biome and picking them up off the floor. And you can get the blood clots from killing ticks. Over here, I have a stuffed mushroom that has been cooked, and as you can see, it gives you an ITA of 75 and also some health and stamina. This one right next to it is a mage cap and is the third ITA food in the game currently, and this will give you an ITA of 25. So you can just pick these up and eat them straight away. On top of that, you can also make a minor ITA mead. Now, this is the only ITA mead in the game. There is no medium or better at this stage. Now, for this, you'll need the honey, sap, yotam puffs, and also mage caps. As for the yotam puffs, these again can be found in Mistlands just by wandering around and picking them up off the floor. On top of that, we have new ITA armor in the game. So let's have a look, for example, at the ITA weave robe, and you'll see the materials that it needs down here. Now, the robe gives you plus 40% ITA regen, and the trousers also give you plus 40% ITA regen. There is no ITA cape, but there is an ITA weave hood, as you can see here, and this gives you plus 20%. So if I go ahead and equip all of the current ISA armor in the game, I get plus 100% regen. And this is how the armor looks. Have to say, I think it does look very, very cool and a nice new addition to the game. On top of that, when you kill the new boss and you hang the boss trophy at spawn, it gives you a couple of abilities, and one of those is plus 100% ITA regen. So I have four magical items in my inventory. We've got the Staff of Embers and the Staff of Frost, as well as over here, the Staff of protection and the dead razor. So these two right here are the blood magic and these two right here are the elemental magic. So let's go ahead and equip our staff of embers and eat some of this stuff right here. And you'll see now we've got this purple bar starting to fill up and that is our ITA. So if I spawn in a seeker whilst holding, I can just use this like any other weapon and left click in order to do an attack. And you'll see that when I do this attack, it does reduce my ITA, which then has to regen. So it regens in the same way that your stamina would regen. You use it up to do an attack, but then while you're waiting, it starts to regen on its own so long as you've eaten the ITA food. And this right here is the frost one. So the frost you can just hold down left click whereas the ember staff you have to sort of fire those fireballs sporadically over time. Now if we compare this to the staff of protection we'll see what happens here. So my ITA is starting to regen and my health is on 101 right now as you can see. And if I left click this then boom we get that animation and my health there went down to 61. It started to recover a little bit now but that's because it's blood magic and does use some of your health every time you cast a spell. Now you'll see here that this is going to protect me from the Seeker's attacks, but over time the Seeker will be able to break through it. Also, once cast, you'll see in the top right of your screen, you do have a countdown on the magical barrier, so it will eventually run out after that time. Now another blood magic item is the Dead Razor, so let's go ahead and equip that and I'll show you what this does. So whilst holding it, if I left click, you'll see right here, I'm actually able to summon dead enemies up, and they're actually not enemies to me, but they're going to actually be on my side. So here we go, this is Halfdan, and we can pet Halfdan, and he loves us. <laughs> As it says there, you can also rename these guys if you want to. Now, if you were to go ahead and upgrade your Dead Razor to level 2, which is the maximum quality for it, then when it's equipped, we can actually 
she left click again and raise a second undead person here to again help us. So now they're both on our team. Now when I tried to do it a third time there, one of the original ones died and we got this other one. So two is the maximum you can have helping you out. And you see here, if I walk around, they will follow me. If I spawn in a seeker now, these guys will actually attack the seeker in order to protect me. Now they are fairly weak, but they will help you out a little bit. And obviously if you've got a couple of them, then that's going to be fairly useful. Now, as you increase your blood magic level, the dead that you raise to help you out will actually be stronger. So over time, this could be quite powerful in the game. Now, when you're attacking enemies, you can now combine your magical attacks with normal attacks. Let me show you what I mean. Holding the staff of Ember here, I can go ahead and shoot this and then quickly switch to my sword in the hotkey and start attacking with that. While I attack with the sword, I'm only using my stamina. It is worth mentioning, you'll see here that as I use this stamina, my item will not regen. However, it can be a quick way to fire off at an enemy and then if you've run out of items, quickly switch over if you need to do some more damage to it. Obviously, at the moment, everything in Mistlands is new, so I'm just trying to mention everything that could be useful to you in this video. So the dad jokes are, of course, coming, but I really hope today's video was helpful. And if it was, please do consider liking and subscribing for more. But for now, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Today, my son asked, can I have a bookmark? And I burst into tears. 11 years old and he still doesn't know my name is Ben. When I was a kid, my dad got fired from his job as a road worker for theft. I refused to believe he could do such a thing, but when I got home, all the signs were there. Why didn't Han Solo enjoy his steak dinner? It was chewy.